Welcome to Reality TV, your source for snarky reality TV recaps. If you are new to the podcast, I'm Jody, aka your best friend who says all the stuff you're thinking, but you're too smart and too nice to say it out loud. Each week, I watch the shows we all love and love to hate, and then I break down the best and worst scenes that left us all with a collective cringe. Now, as many of you know, a few nights ago, I was asked to be on TLC's 90 Day Live, kind of a call in. I don't know what you'd call it, call-in show after the 90 Day Fiancé episode. And although it got some mixed reviews, I just have to say I was super appreciative and grateful and, to be honest, shocked that I was asked to be on it. And I'm a huge fan of Michelle Collins, have been for years. And I know she was kind of getting roasted on Twitter, but I have to say, I think it could not have been easy for her to try to cram in all of us guests calling in She probably had to stay diplomatic to people on the show, to the producers, but also you got to deliver to the fans. I don't know. I don't envy her at all. I'm not just saying this to kiss her ass because let's be honest, I know for a fact she doesn't listen to this little piddly podcast, but I'm just saying that I don't want those of you who don't know her to form your opinion on this 90 Day Live. Go and listen to her other podcast. It was called Fresh Batch. I know she's on Sirius in the morning now. She's also on Watch What Crappens every once in a while. She's friends with Ben and Ronnie. So give her a chance. Even go back and watch those old episodes. Remember that show that used to be on VH1? I love the 90s. I love the 2000s. Pretty sure she was on some of those episodes. So anyway, I'm rambling really quickly. I just want to add, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash realitytvpod for bonus episodes, recaps of Real Housewives of New York, whole lot of juicy stuff that's starting at just a buck a month. Come on, it's not getting me behind gates. It's just helping me keep my little old laptop virus free and keeping the podcast online. Also be sure to check out my other podcast with my co-host and friend Carrie from Sip and Shine Pod. That's Moms on the Rocks. And this week, Carrie held my feet to the flame because I am a Pedro apologist and she really grilled me on it. So Check that out if you're interested. Coming up this week, we're going to be recording, and we both want to get into talking about astrology and crystals, whether we believe that stuff or not, and also some celeb blind items. That's Moms on the Rocks. Check it out. And now, the reason you're here, Teen Mom 2. I have two weeks of horrible goodness, so buckle up. Just make sure it's more secure than Jace was in that front seat. Whoa, what the hell was that? We're going to get to that, but first, let's talk about Chelsea. Chelsea goes to get a blood test to find out if the baby is a boy or a girl. Watson has a moose hat. It's a girl. They buy pink balloons. Cole is happy. Yay. Now, in this week's episode, Aubrey goes to gymnastics. Then friend Chelsea Bell shows up with a matching nose ring. Father-daughter dance is coming up, so Cole gets a haircut to match his hairstylist. Then they go and dance. Yeah, that was it. If you're hoping for more of a recap on Chelsea, I wish I was the girl to give it to you, but she's got nothing to watch on TV. She's got a normal life going on. It is it is what it is. Okay, now let's talk about Brianna. So Brianna is visiting Javi in Delaware, and Shirley's coming along with her. Do I even need to say how much I love Shirley? Let's just, it's a given from here on out. We all love when Shirley's there. Now Javi is, once again, still pressuring Brianna to move to Delaware with her two kids in tow. For some reason, he doesn't seem to understand why Brianna might be, oh, a little hesitant and just picking up, moving hours away by plane from the only thing she's ever known, her family, her job, the only thing her kids have ever known, their fathers. Yeah, they may not be that involved, but still. Now, you guys... Javi is 25, okay? Now, 25 is almost 30, which is only 20 years away from 50, which is half of 100. So, you know, he thinks he's got to lock this shit down and go for it. No time to waste. Thankfully, Brianna is starting to have enough sense to see that there doesn't seem to be too much compromising on Javi's end. And there's no thought from Javi about what Brianna is sacrificing in order to move this quickly in the relationship. So let's go back to Miami where we find Brittany eating soup. My very bestest friend who just hasn't found out about me yet. She's gotten five wisdom teeth removed. Girl, 
She should have consulted me first because I would have warned her. Guess who woke up in the middle of her wisdom teeth removal? Mm, yep, this girl right here. Now you see why I turned out to be such a bitch, right? Okay, well, Brianna is playing with Stella, who, by the way, is the cutest baby girl ever on Teen Mom. She tells producers that she and Javi finally broke up. You see, Javi wanted Brianna moved to Delaware immediately. He was not willing to wait it out, and Brittany is now pissed. I've never seen anyone that swollen from oral surgery or any surgery to be so, what's the word I'm looking for, the word I'm not right now, or actually I am, verbose. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. That girl, she's got talent. We've been saying this for a while. Get Brittany her own show. Now, not only that, but Javi didn't want Brianna getting surgery on camera or Snapchat, whatever the hell these girls do. But I don't get this. Now, I do think all this surgery for the camera is gross. But if Brianna has already done it before on camera, I don't understand what the big deal is now. I mean, she's getting her boobs, lipo, a tummy tuck, and thank God she said she's getting her ass deflated. Oh, she's getting it for a discount or free. So I don't understand what his problem is. We've seen her body cut open. This God, I never thought in my 38 years of life, I'm, I, oh my God, being a mother of two, I'd be talking about someone getting their ass sliced and diced on camera before and that it's no big deal. But you know what I'm saying? If she's already shown the inside of her ass to everyone, oh God, this is just getting worse. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, I was going to say like open flesh, but this is just getting... This is worse and worse. Okay, you guys understand what I'm saying. We've seen her under anesthesia in surgery before, so it's a big deal now. But to Javi, it is a big deal because let's just call it what it is. He doesn't have control over the situation. He is a total control freak and he's got to get over himself. But Brianna, she is secure. She is willing to let someone wipe her ass. She's got no shame. That says a lot right there. Now, like my girl Brittany said, she's cinnamon raisin bread, multigrain. She's an everything bagel. Javi's just used to some white wonder bread chicks. I know I didn't know Justice saying that. So we got to get that shit on a shirt. Brittany needs to TM that shit like skinny girl. I would buy, even if she did one for everything, cinnamon raisin bread shirt, multigrain shirt, everything bagel shirt. I'd buy all three. Okay, now let's jump to Shirley and Brianna, either at a Mexican or Chinese food buffet. Couldn't quite get the handle of the restaurant. You know, I really enjoy that kind of a thing. So that bothered me, but they were talking about Javi being an asshole. And the big reason is they're pissed off because Javi was going to be the one to come and wipe their assholes after Dr. Miami rearranged their bodies. Now, luckily, there's an ex-boyfriend who's willing to take care of both of them and wipe both of their asses, which begs the question, I don't know what Shirley and Brianna do to keep their exes in good graces, let alone have two of them volunteer to wipe two of their asses in weeping wounds What the hell's going on? I mean, I don't even think my husband would do that, and he supposedly loves me. All right, so now let's jump to this week's episode. Brianna's telling her mom and Brittany of the latest surgery agenda and also about Javi being a jerk. Now, what I don't understand, and probably no one understands about Javi, is why he is loud and proud about breaking up with Brianna, right? He went on the stupid podcast, all that shit. But then he gets mad at her that her ex is going to be wiping her ass and he calls her my girl on the phone. Again, with the wiping the ass, everyone's just dying to do it. But thank God Roxanne figures out a plan, steps up to the plate. I mean, for a mom, she's wiped Brianna's ass, what, a thousand times? So what's another 10 or 20 times as an adult? But shock to us all, she's devised this plan to have Devon come and stay at the apartment with Brittany to take care of Nova. Now, I was concerned to say the least, but you know what? 
If Britney is cool with it, I trust it. Britney would never let anyone mess with her niece, so you know Devon cannot be that bad. Now, finally, Bri and Shirley get to Miami, and who shows up at the doctor's office during Shirley's surgery but Javi? You guys, he is legitimately a freaking weirdo. He bashes Brianna, goes and tells Kale stuff about her, blasts her in public, and then shows up in Miami so he can look like the good guy on camera, right? Don't you think that's what it was? But no, Brianna's my girl. She knows she can do better. She's not having it. And yes, I'm on Brianna's side again. Now, a little sip of my coffee. I know we're getting a little loosey-goosey here in the summer. I'm loosening things up. You might hear my dishwasher in the background or my kids um, learning things on Xbox and their iPad. So, um, yeah, let me take a little sip, and then we're going to move on to Kale. All right, I'm back. I'm caffeinated for just a moment, and we get Kale's voiceover. It's Isaac's birthday, so Javi's dropping off Lincoln. Is it just me, or does every scene with Kale start with that exact voiceover? I swear to God, I think Isaac has had four birthdays this season, and Javi is always dropping off Lincoln, and Kale is forever pissed about it. Now, of course, Kale is wearing the pink sweatshirt uniform. And of course, Isaac loves the game Monopoly. The one game that no kids except little geniuses love because it's the game that never ends. Show me a parent that truly enjoys playing Monopoly with their kids, like the full version. And I guarantee that family also only eats organic, homemade, yeast-free bread, and they don't own a TV in their home. Like, no, we're anti, we're word-only family, no electronics. Now, more importantly, I don't even know where that came from. I I guess the Huffs are anti-word family. But anyway, more importantly, Javi shows up and takes Kale and her ass upstairs. Now, while they're up there, he tells her that Kale was right all along. He's breaking up with Brianna because Brianna won't marry him and move to Delaware, just like we talked about with Brianna's segment. And here's where Kale turns instantly into Bethany Frankel and declares she is always right and Kale knows everything because Brianna's getting surgery again and doesn't want kids. That just about killed me. Hi there, hypocrite Kale. Didn't you also have surgery and you also said that you didn't want to have kids? What's the saying? Rubber glue. Let's say Brianna's ass is rubber. Kale, yours is silicone goo. Whatever you say bounces off her rubber ass and sticks to your silicone goo. Something like that. Now, bravo to the editors who at the end of this scene, they pull away and they do that freeze frame with a Teen Mom 2 book. And Kale is standing there with a Dorito in her hand. (sighs) They hate her too. I am sure of it. Now, fast forward through the commercial, we get Isaac being serenaded by Kale in her coven. The most depressing happy birthday I've ever seen. You know, Bone was ready to throw down and get her hands on that cake. And I feel like Isaac just needs to get the hell out of there, right? I feel like he would fit in so much better in my home where, I I don't know, I guess just where Kale is not. Now, meanwhile, Javi is over at his house doing the five fucking finger pop like Curly Sue with his carne asada. Gross. Well, not the carne, just Javi in his face and that thing with his fingers. But anyway, he's telling his sister that he was upset about Brianna getting plastic surgery on Snapchat. And then one thing led to another, yada, yada, yada. They broke up. Cool story, Javi. And now we get to the podcast scene. Fuck off with your Ninja Turtle headphones and trashing Brianna on the stupid podcast. So mature. Show us again how much more empowered and mature and tough as nails you are by gossiping about another teen mom, Kale. She gets mad at the same shit that she does herself. She is so up her own silicone ass. She's so stupid. 
Now, in this week's episode, we have Kale coming over to watch Lincoln so Javi can go work out and she can raid his pantry. Like, thanks for the scene, MTV. I don't know what the hell that was for except to make me feel better about the horrible double chin I'm rocking this summer. I gotta lipo that shit out myself. But anyway, Kale's telling us that she's flying to Atlanta to record a podcast. Let me say that again. She's flying to Atlanta to record a podcast. What the fuck kind of podcast is this? I know it's one that people listen to that then come on mine and give mine shitty reviews because it's not that one, but I don't understand it. So she just gets to check the fuck out of life to go record a podcast in a different city. And this time it's with Leah and they're bringing cute clothes so they can take pictures. Ugh, I don't understand. Any other podcasters out there a little bit frustrated with this or wondering if you're the only one that's missing the big picture? Because I don't know anyone else who records a podcast like this. But wait, it's not only that, because guess what? Not only does she get this little vacation to Atlanta, she's then jetting off to Hawaii with her friends and inviting Leah because she hasn't had a vacation in almost a year. Now, you wouldn't know it from Leah's, uh, yeah, that she wants to go with Kale, but guess what? She's going to Hawaii too. This is seriously what the world's coming to. Normal moms like us who deserve to jet off to Atlanta to record a podcast or take a little vacay with our hashtag girl squad are just the suckers watching former teen moms do it on camera. And they're probably writing it off on their taxes as a business expense. On second thought, maybe I should get a hold of her accountant. Now let's talk about Leah. Oh, you know, I love talking about Leah. Jeremy and Leah are taking Addie to one of those paint places. I don't think too much happened here because honestly, all I could concentrate on was Leah destroying that paintbrush she was holding. She's just stabbing this poor thing instead of, you know how normal people, like we just know innately you brush a brush side to side. No, she's, it's not even dappling. I don't know what the fuck she was doing with it. I have a hard time believing the West Virginia school system didn't teach this proper brush technique. I think the blame for this one lays squarely on Mama Dawn. I don't have the exact reason or facts why. I just think it does. Now let's fast forward to the bus stop where things get a little dark. Leah's picking up the girls is and she's worried because Allie's been falling asleep in class. Well, I guess we need to get to the bottom of this one. Okay, take a second. Let's all brainstorm. Mmm... What would cause kid to be tired? Oh, real head scratcher. I don't know. Maybe we should head to Victoria's apartment. Maybe she can help us figure it out. Oh, just kidding. Victoria's eyes are fucking pinpoints and she's slurring her words. Leah herself can barely keep her eyes open because her fake eyelashes are so ridiculously long and heavy. So these two are just hemming and hawing over why Allie might be so tired from walking around school and bouncing around the bounce house place and walking up and down the front steps of her house. Ugh, I don't know. Let me think. Mm, I think I got it. Maybe because she's not using the fucking wheelchair that Dr. Sal told her to use three years ago. Now we get to the most frustrating scene for me, And that was listening to Leah try to finish Corey's sentences. She does this every freaking time she meets up with Corey for a drop-off. If you don't know what I'm talking about, next time they do a drop-off in the abandoned grocery store parking lot, really pay attention. I think what Leah is doing, it's like a subconscious way of trying to make herself sound smart or that she's agreeing with Corey Because we all know she still loves him and she wishes she were married to him. But what she does, you know that scene on SNL or that skit that Kristen Wiig and uh, I'm forgetting his name. Oh, Fred Armisen do where they start singing the same song and they're kind of making it up, improving it at the same time. That's kind of what Leah is doing. So Corey will start saying something and then Leah just kind of like cuts him off and tries to come across like she's saying the same thing, and she looks like a complete try-hard fool. Now, let's get to this week's episode. 
And we find Addie's having a birthday at Sky Zone, which it was painful to watch. Just fucking kill me now. I don't know how, but somehow I've made it this far in my kids' childhoods without having to host a party anywhere other than my own home. And my kids have only ever wanted to have their family and their cousins. Thank God. Knock on wood. There's not enough Xanax in the world to get me through a birthday party at a party place. I think I've told you before, I don't bring my kids to Chuck E. Cheese. They've never been because way long ago, I was smart enough to tell them at two, three years old, three, four years old, we just weren't ever pre-approved to go to Chuck E. Cheese. So yeah, we just can't go. Sorry. Oh, bummer. All right. So um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So Leah is going to be flying... Let's see, it wouldn't be north, east, west, south. I don't know my West Virginia geography very well. Pretty sure it's south. Yeah, because they're going to Atlanta. So Leah is flying south to Atlanta to see Kel and do the podcast. Now, I noticed that whenever Leah talks to Kel, she does the opposite of what she does with Corey. She gets very quiet and very ambivalent. I think Kel really throws Leah off her game. Like Leah's afraid of her and I suppose we all are. So she just takes quite a while and quite a few drinks to warm up. Now over some cocktails, Kale and Leah start talking about Lou Howes in Hawaii. Yeah, you heard me right. And then they also talk about, oh, you know, having more than one baby daddy. (laughs) We can all relate. And then Leah gathers her balls together and drops the bombshell to Kel that she and Jeremy hooked up. (gasps) However, Kale did not have that reaction. She had quite the opposite, actually. Of course, Leah wanted this big shock on Kale's face because Leah loves drama. But instead, Kale's like, yeah, and Javi and I bang one out too, so (laughs) you don't know me, you don't pay my bills, and, and, so, so. These two, they're just so proud of sleeping with their exes. You know, just like a Carrie and Miranda and the girls is from Sex and the City, (laughs) y'all. Now, after dinner in the next morning, Leah's twin sister, who's being played by Anne Hathaway in the before of The Princess Diaries, is there. And, um, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, that was actually Leah. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. What the hell? Now, I don't want to look shame because I look like a monster without makeup. However, I still think I resemble myself, but Leah, without makeup, looks straight out of 1989, and I think her teeth were filed down into triangles. Think I'm kidding? Go back and watch. Now, Kale comes out from her hair and makeup, and she must have used the same color palette as our commander-in-chief because she is orange as can be, and she has never looked more like the Cowardly Lion. And so help me... If she says the word podcast one more time, we get it, Kale. This thing you're pretending to do today as a job is exciting to you because it's the day that you get to pretend to do it. Just go put some more bronzer on. Now, the taping of this podcast, throw it in again. Let's just do it again. Podcast. Kale's doing a podcast today. It was beyond cringeworthy, even for me. And I sat through that season of Married at First Sight with that dude that lived on the bus that loved brushing his teeth with his wife, who, the one who only wore clothes from the junior section at Ross Dress for Less. So you know it was bad. Now you know it's also bad. Janelle's scenes two weeks in a row. Holy shit. Now let's start off talking about last week's hour because there's a lot of dark stuff to unpack. The first thing that scared the shit out of me was immediately seeing Jace about to kill someone with that golf club. (laughs) I mean, what a sweet kid. (laughs) Now, Janelle does her best acting to tell us that she doesn't care about David getting fired from Teen Mom. No, 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 not at all. I mean, she doesn't even have any problems with David. No, they're just so happy. Yeah, Nothing really new there. It's everyone else's fault as usual. Also, as usual, Janelle's pissed off at Barbara because she thinks Babs is brainwashing Jace. Tale is old this time, right? 
I mean, it's just such a bummer for Janelle that cameras just happen to not be around when David is being the sweetest guy ever when he's not a monster because Janelle says they had a great weekend together and she's dropping Jace off with Barbara. Janelle also seems to think it's just totally cool to play pharmacist with her son's medication. This, mm mm-hmm. Okay, get in check. Let me just relay the facts first before I lay in. Janelle said that Jace was acting fine without his medication. I'm assuming, I, I think we all know that it was for his ADHD. So she just didn't bother giving them to him. Hey, asshole, he's acting fine because he's on the meds. Fuck Janelle, really, just fuck her. You don't do that with kids' meds. I have seen it as a teacher. I've seen it, you know, just as a parent, as a family member. When your kid is doing well on a medication, whether it's for behavior or health or medical reasons, whatever, you don't just stop them on it because it gets better. That's not the way it works. Oh, now I got to spread my uh, snark around and that's going to go to Barbara because she should get some shit for Jace being in that front seat. He, of course, should be in the back. But also what's more alarming is that Jace, once again, is stuck in the middle of this Janelle and Barbara stuff. He can't call one on the phone without the other one being upset. They talk about it with him, talk about before, during, after. God, we got a like group fund, a GoFundMe, maybe get a nice fruit basket, a nice uh, Starbucks gift card for Jace's therapist because, damn, she is doing the Lord's work. Now, that clip at the end of last week's episode, uh, whoa, I had heard about it before I saw it, and seeing it was worse than I thought it was going to be. Jace starts saying to Barbara that Janelle and David are pieces of shit, and then he spits. He repeats it, and then he spits. Now, of course, this made me sad for Jace, but I got to be honest, it was scary, like really scary to me. There was kind of a blank look in Jace's eyes. It's like he's not realizing that his behavior and what he's saying is out of the norm or something bad. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I'm not trying to bag on the kid. Clearly, he has issues. I wish the best for him, but it was scary. I'm sure Barbara says bad stuff about Janelle and David around Jace, but I don't think him saying that in that scene was something having to do with Barbara. I think the fact that Jay spit, that looks like something David would do, that he would get that from a man. I don't think Barbara's walking around saying Janelle and David are pieces of shit and then spitting. That just screams David to me. Okay, now let's get to this week's latest episode where we find Barbara bragging about her $8 suitcases. I got to tell you, That puts such a smile on my face because having a mom myself who manages to find the same kind of deals like this, I was proud of the old gal. You go get them, Babs. Now, we also get to meet Janelle's brother, Colin, who, well, um, how do I put this? He doesn't look well. Kind of looks like he may be allergic to the sun and vegetables. There's a very potato-like quality to Colin. And actually, I think Jace really resembles him. And the only thing that made Colin perk up because he was kind of checked out was talking about this rat that he and Janelle killed and buried in the backyard. And then when they cut all their hair off, ha, 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 ha. He, okay, he might not have said that they killed the rat, but I think it's, we can all safely assume, right? Now, this all leads to a scene with Janelle going to a therapy session alone with Jace. Now, of course, Janelle's going to spin this like it's her idea. And fuck Barbara, she's been wanting to do therapy alone with Jace forever. Yeah, right. Which begs the question to me, do you think Janelle truly thinks that we buy her bullshit? Or do you think she really is this stupid? I don't think she's this dumb. I think Janelle is a vindictive person and... It's hard for me to even say this. This is a stupid show, but I don't think she really cares about Jace's well-being all that much or not as much as winning is important to her. 
Now, she sure didn't win my vote when she got all cocky about the NRA with that smirk on her face. It was clearly an F you to viewers because that's what got David fired up and eventually fired in that Instagram post. And once again, Chase is in the front seat. So, of course, you know me. I got curious, looked up the North Carolina laws, and from what I saw, you have to be at least eight years old and 80 pounds to be in the front seat. Otherwise, you should be in the back. Now, I'm not Jace's pediatrician. I'm not super great at weight predictions, but Jace does not look 80 pounds to me. I have two kids the same age. One's got a little more muscular build, and he's not even close to 80 pounds. So I do not think he should be up there at all. Now, I got to talk about the scene of the frying pan for dinner. Again, I'm not a pediatrician. I'm no health food nut, but a sugar-filled strawberry daiquiri and a Coke for a kid who has hyperactivity issues that we assume and is within a few hours of bedtime, mm, not the greatest choice. And dear God, the size of that steak was ginormous. I mean, were they going for like the old 96er, like in the classic movie, The Great Outdoors? By the way, if you're looking for a great throwback, watch that movie with your kids. Highly recommend. It's got a few swear words, a little kissing scene, but it is so freaking funny. The complete opposite of uh, the scene with Janelle and Jace. But good thing she got a selfie because if there's no selfie, then it didn't happen. God, she sucks. All right. Well, you know what? Go check out The Great Outdoors. We're going to leave this on a high note. That's a good movie to get you through until next week. Next week, I'll be back with 90 Day Fiance and Team Mom, of course. And there are so many good shows coming up at the end of this month. We've got Real Housewives of Orange County. There's more 90 Day Fiance series. I know there's a couple other ones that I can't think of right off the top of my head right now. But be prepared for those. Mixing some in. Ooh, you never know what's going to happen. Also, you know where to find me. Talk to me at Reality TV Pod everywhere patreon.com slash realitypod. Don't forget to check out Moms on the Rocks podcast. That is Moms OTR on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, crank that air conditioning, stay cool, and stay salty. Mm-hmm.